My name is Thomas Macy, and I'm a senior in the Sustainable Agriculture Program here at the University of Maine Orono. I'm originally from Portland, Maine, and for my capstone project, I've decided to study microgreens. So microgreens are usually produced in 20 row seeding trays or 10, 20 greenhouse flats. This, as you can see, is a 20 row tray. You simply start by filling the tray with your choice of sterile soilless potting mix. This potting mix that I'm using is ProMix BX. It's their all-purpose uh, potting mix. It's mostly peat moss with some perlite, not a lot of compost, so it drains very well. And you just want to fill it to the top like so. So in seeding microgreens, it's best to broadcast them with a very large salt and pepper shaker. This particular salt and pepper shaker has three interchangeable lids, and as you can see, this is the smallest lid. It's actually the ideal size for smaller seeded microgreen varieties that I'll be planting today. So today we're going to be seeding Johnny's Mild Micro Mix, and it's a blend of milder flavored brassicas, kales, cabbages, that kind of thing. So to start, it's just a matter of filling the salt and pepper shaker with a certain amount of seed. And then, broadcasting is kind of a delicate process. It's a matter of gently shaking. You're aiming for 10 to 12 seeds per square inch with the smaller seeded varieties. And for larger seeded varieties, you're aiming for six to eight seeds per square inch. That's a pretty high density, but it's important that you actually get within that ballpark. If you're not seeding enough, you won't get the yields you want per flat, and if you're seeding too much, you run the risk of disease pressure in your flats. Once your microgreens have been seeded, you can either put a very thin layer of potting mix or a very thin layer of finely sifted vermiculite over your seeds, but I found that this isn't quite necessary and that all you really need for good germination is an empty 20 row seeding tray to gently pat down the flat. And this I found provides adequate seed to soil contact for really consistent germination. So in watering microgreens, it's very important that you choose a method that doesn't actually damage or cause soil splashing onto the microgreens. This will dirty the final product and just add more labor when it comes to washing. Suggested methods of watering include misting and gentle spraying. And for greenhouse growers with the infrastructure, sub-irrigation is also ideal. After watering in your freshly sowed flats, it's key that you cover your flats with a standard 1020 germination dome. These can be made out of either clear or white plastic. And they fit over the 20 row seating trays like so. When growing microgreens, it's important that the potting mix stays moist, but not saturated. If the potting mix is too wet, you run the risk of disease pressure forming in this really high density planting. On top of that, you have to watch out for temperature. Temperatures that are too high will cause rapid wilting and may cause ungerminated seeds to remain dormant. For this reason, it is important that you remove germination domes on very hot, sunny days. Fertilizer should be used sparingly and may actually be unnecessary in some grains that are grown in only two weeks. That said, in longer growing varieties like carrots, you may need to use a certain amount of fertilizer towards the end. Any fertilizer applied should be soluble in water. And you should also avoid fertilizer that may cause an off flavor in the foliage, namely fish emulsion or fish hydrolysate. And so for that reason, it's also very important that when you do fertilize, you use something like sub-irrigation, which would avoid any kind of fertilizer splashing onto the leaves. 
So harvesting microgreens can be done with a very sharp knife or with a sharp pair of scissors. However you do it, you need to handle the microgreens very carefully. When harvesting microgreens, it's really important that you don't get any of the potting mix into your final product. Because these are so gentle and so sensitive that when you wash them, you can't really afford to spin them in some kind of heavy salad spinner. So, to summarize our total costs, you've got your labor costs here, and you have your materials costs here, all right? So, the time it takes somebody to sew 16 flats is, let's say, one hour, and so their hourly wage is $9.45. Then, for watering and scouting over the two-week lifespan of the microgreens is another two hours and costs $18.90. Harvesting is a little slow, and that costs, and that takes two hours, excuse me, and costs $18.90 for a subtotal of $47.25. So this is your cost of all of your labor. Now, for materials, you have seeds, flats, and substrate. Now, the seed cost per flat varies between variety, so it's important that when you're doing this that you keep track of how many flats of one variety you're sowing and, of course, your seeding rate. So the total cost of seed for this 16 flat planting is $9.83, while a flat costs 48 cents for a total of $7.68, and then your substrate costs about 32 cents per flat for a total of $5.12. So your subtotal for all of your materials is $22.63 which means that your total cost for this entire planting is $69.88. And that seems really high, but actually your cost per pound is $23.29. So that you're not doing too bad if this is your actual cost per pound, considering that you're already adding in all of these labor costs. So if you're selling at or slightly above this, you are actually paying your own wage. In addition, you can also figure out your cost per flat by basically dividing this number by 16, which gives you $4.36. And that's important if you're actually hoping to sell your microgreens by the flat rather than selling them in a hard plastic clamshell.